Friends, we are finally here. Now we have reviewed each of these guns individually. These are our competitors for the best elk rifle of 2020. And whatever you guys decide in the comments is the rifle that we are gonna actually take on this hunt, with one exception. We can't take the 30-06, for we cannot find ammo anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. In the voting, let me explain just real quick how the voting is going to work. Uh, we actually want you to just go ahead and in the comments below tell us which gun you would like us to take slash which gun you would take if this mm -hmm. were your choice. Um, go ahead and include the 30-06, the Browning, sure. if that's the one you want. I'd just like to know um, mm -hmm. what your preference is. And we'll take number two if that's yeah. number one. So if that's the pick, we'll just have to go with number two. But go ahead and, and still pick whichever of these guns you like best. But this video is not about us. It's about you yep. and just understanding which of these guns is best. And so we're going to talk you through some of the things we found as we reviewed all of them um, and kind of talk you through your decision as you're choosing the best hunting rifle for you. Now, in the voting, we don't want to take price into account at all. Um, it's just who makes the best rifle. All right, let's get Absolutely. started. So these are all chambered differently. We have 30-06, 280 Ackley Improved, 7 Mag, and, and 270 Winchester. We intentionally got different cartridges because we want to talk about that. Yep. Uh, which is the best cartridge for elk? We'll go into this a little bit more in depth in another video. But really, all of them are elk capable. And I wouldn't have a problem hunting elk with any one of these. To note, however, the 270 Winchester struggles at past 320 yards is where this rifle doesn't have 1,500 foot-pounds of energy anymore. Now, it's not like an elk says, aha, 1499, I didn't die. <laughs> I'm not die. gonna die now. Um, but that's the general wisdom of the distance. And a lot of you harp on us when we talk about range and they're like, you shouldn't be shooting far anyway. Well, 24% 24. of the backfire audience has shot a big game animal past 400 yards. We don't advocate long range hunting at all, but a 400 yard shot in huge open basins where we're hunting in Idaho is not at all uncommon. So let's talk. We just said the 270 Winchester is going to struggle out. You know, at 400 yards, I'm probably not taking that shot. That said, all of the rest of these are going to be perfectly fine at that range at 1,500 plus um, foot-pounds of energy. You know, you got your 30-06 that's still going to be at about 1,550 foot-pounds of energy. Let's see what we got here. The 280 Ackley Improved is actually higher, about 1,835 foot-pounds of energy again for about an average load um, and then the 7 mag topping it off at 1891 foot pounds of energy again on average so Magnum, baby. all of these things are going to pack plenty of punch um, as elk guns but again that 270 winchester is just a little bit light at that at that range anything inside 320 though i'm i'm pretty happy with it now let's go to the weight of the rifle because where we're hunting is a nasty hike I showed you guys some B-roll the other day just of the place. Every time I hike up there, I'm like, oh my gosh, how are you going to pack an elk out of this? <laughs> it's just so steep. And that's why he's inviting me to come along. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Carry out that elk. Lightweight really matters. And we yep. have two rifles here that are especially light. The Kimber um, Mountain Ascent Subalpine mm -hmm. is extremely light, sub five pounds, the rifle yep. only. And then we have the Savage 110 Ultralight. Uh, which is also another very lightweight gun. However, you'll also notice we have four different scopes on these rifles, again, quite intentionally. Yep. Um, and on if you put this Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 5 to 25 by 50 on the Savage 110 Ultralight, it turns into a Savage 110 not ultralight. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, the Kimber Mountain Ascent, even with this Zeiss... Um, I don't remember Conquest the specific, the Conquest. Scope. Okay, and this is a, what's the magnification? I should have looked at that. Anyway. Four to 16. It's still a big scope for such a light gun, mm -hmm. but it's certainly not as heavy as this Viper is. But also this is a lighter gun, even than the Savage 110 Ultralight. And being such a light rifle, it allows me to put on a scope with good magnification, with great optics in it, um, that's going to allow me to take that shot at 400 plus yards. Whereas, you know, I could put on a lower magnification scope, which, by the way, we should talk about. Um, I could put on a lower magnification scope 
and I could put on a much smaller scope, um, but I have the option to put on more because this is still a very Yeah, we saw gun. a couple comments from people when we reviewed the Kimber, the Kimber that said, that's stupid, why would you put a big uh, scope on such a lightweight rifle? That kind of defeats the purpose. I understand that perspective, and sometimes that's true if you do want something super light. But if you choose a lightweight rifle platform, you're able to use the yeah. bigger optic and get a little bit better view um, and still stay underweight. So really three of these guns are just about all the same weight how we have them configured right now. Exactly. Um, but the Kimber is about a pound and a half lighter. Than all the rest. And it's <laughs> noticeable when you pick up this Savage 110 Ultralight with the Vortex, it's like not so ultralight anymore. Yep. If we end up having to take that one, I don't know if I can take that scope with it. <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one. To me, in a in a elk rifle, in any sort of hunting rifle, accuracy is going to be key. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to take that shot at a few hundred yards pretty, pretty consistently and be happy with that. And so accuracy matters. Now, every one of these guns is MOA capable. Mm -hmm. And there are those who would say, if it's MOA capable, who cares beyond that point? We I disagree, disagree with that perspective. <laughs> I really do. And, and I get it. Yeah. If you're, uh, you know, in dense forest and mm -hmm. your shot's never going to be past 100 yards, yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter. Not at all. Right? But let's say we have uh, 10 inch vitals or whatever on a deer or something, right? Well, they're usually not as tall as they are wide, the lungs, for example. Um, and so maybe we have whatever, eight inches of vitals there. You aim for the middle. And so if it's eight inches tall, four inches is the crack in the hair of the top of the vitals, right? So that's one MOA. That's one You're MOA at 400 yards. At the top or the bottom of the vitals. Exactly. So that tiny bit actually does matter if you're ever taking a 400 shot. And we're talking about distance here. We don't do long range hunting. No. We just don't. Uh, but 400 yards in Idaho is not uncommon. And apparently with the backfire audience in general. Exactly. And so I do care. So again, this is an MOA capable rifle. Mm -hmm. But in terms of accuracy this is easily a half MOA that Savage capable 110 rifle. is a sweet gun. <laughs> so I'm just going to be a little bit more inclined to take this uh, especially on the hunt we're going on in particular where we do have such an open area um, I'm a little bit more inclined to lean that direction. So in terms of accuracy we ranked the guns and it's very difficult to put exact parameters on accuracy in this category in yeah. the higher end where they're already so good and we're talking about quarter inch differences. You just have to shoot a lot of groups from a lot of different loads at a lot of distances yeah. to really get a feel for what a, uh, the rifle is usually capable of and not just its best ever group. Given all that into account after we put a ton of rounds through each one of these, we would rank the Savage as the most accurate rifle on the table, followed by the Fierce, then the Browning, and then the Kimber. That's not to say the Kimber uh, is not an accurate gun. It's a very not accurate gun, but we would probably put them in that ranking in terms of total accuracy. That Savage 110 shot some impressive groups. Yeah. Now, do I think that, you know, again, if we're loading our own, that we can dial it in and get any one of these just driving tax? Absolutely, no question. But what we have to deal with right now is, what ammo can we shoot? <laughs> what is available? It's a, big, it's a big issue right now. And so... A rifle that's picky with ammo is yeah. not a good asset right now because it's hard to find the variety. And so we shot several loads with all of them, but that matters. Yep, absolutely. So we, we do need, again, I think, come back to the scopes, mm -hmm. right? So this is, these are four different, very different scopes. Um, In fact, from four different manufacturers. <laughs> again, on purpose. And so there are some things that we would talk about, um, about choosing the right scope for, for a good hunt like that. And the first one, I think, is magnification. Um, when I'm out at the range, I love having that five to 25 uh, magnification. I love being able to get right in there. Yeah. At a hundred yards, even if you're just pump punching regular paper, you can see your spot with yep. a five to 25. Exactly. Uh, some of these other ones are like a four to 16, for yep. example, uh, the, oh, the <laughs> loop holds, I think a three and a half to 18. Um, so some of them are a little bit less than that at that it's 
tough to see a paper impact. If you have one of those splatter targets, you'll see it fine, but just a paper impact, hard to see at 100 yards, yep. which for a practice session is a huge advantage to be able to spot uh, your impacts. So that's magnification for uh, at, the range, at the range, but yeah. what about when you're actually hunting? So you're hunting, you zoom in to 25 so that you can pick which hair on the elk you're gonna hit, right? Um, and when you do that, bang! Where did he go? Did I hit him? You'll have no idea. You better it's have gonna a spotter throw you who's off. watching because you're not going to be able to find it again. If you're hunting alone, you better zoom way out before you shoot so that you can tell what happened and which direction did he even go. Otherwise, you'll have a wounded animal and you don't even know where it went. Uh, you won't know if you dropped him or what. So um, you'll want to zoom out a little bit for hunting anyway, but... Um, I also took the 5 to 25 up on several scouting trips um, and also it was deer season at the time and it's really nice to like spot with your 10 by 42 binoculars and say there's an elk and then use your your scope like kind of like a spotting scope and be able to see let's see if he's good yeah so it's helpful even when you're hunting it's um, helpful to have but when it's time to take that shot it's best to back off and it's going to add weight going to the absolutely. 25 millimeter absolutely the other thing I think we need to talk about in selecting your scope is first focal plane or front focal plane, it's actually here, versus second focal plane or rear focal plane. Um, and there is a difference. And the difference is, is where that reticle, where those markings sit, on which plane they sit, the one that's farther from you or the one that's closer to you. On first focal plane, it's, it's going to be such that when you zoom in, the little hash marks are going to grow um, it, it, the same, you know, proportionate to how far you are zoomed in. And so if you're using those MOA markings, they're still going to be accurate. On an SFP or second focal plane, if it has those markings, which it shouldn't, if it has those markings, they would be inaccurate. The benefit of the second focal plane though, is that reticle stays the same size. On that first focal plane, it's going to grow. It's going to get fat, which is going to make it a little bit harder to get those crosshairs yeah. right where you want them. And so it's maybe a personal preference. I've generally liked that first focal plane. I like being able to have those markings and be able to use the markings. Mm -hmm. But that second focal plane, when, when you got to zoom in, it's really nice to have that really crisp, thin, razor thin line. So We need to do a whole to video on that. There's a lot so to too. learn there. So two of these are first focal plane. Um, the Vortex and the Burris, uh -huh. and then the Zeiss and the Leupold are both second okay. focal plane. Uh, for this hunt, I don't know that it matters a lot. Uh, because the shots generally are further, you're probably going to have a minute to type this in or look at your dope card and just do your turret. Um, so, yeah, there's that though. All right, moving on from scopes, now we need to get to the final thing. So again, this is ignoring price. We have written on our little cards. We have. We had to put it in the drawer so Ricky wouldn't peek. We wrote on here four, three, two, one. So you get four points for being the best rifle. Third to one, right? Um, and so we're gonna. I totally did mine here. backwards. I did four as in fourth place. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, great. But we can total up the points inverted. I'm. We see. We should have just clarified. All right, that. hold yours upside down. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> What'd you get? Okay, My fierce tie. We both picked the fierce as the best gun. Savage. Savage. Browning Kimber. Okay, we both agreed. So there's your ranking from best to worst um, of what we thought just who makes the best rifle. Now, it's not a fair fight. The fierce is like <laughs> twice the cost of the Savage. And I think that goes to show that in terms of like the best gun for the value, Man, this Savage 110. Yeah, is, value it definitely wins. But awesome. same as the Kimber is a two thousand gun, and we both two thousand dollar gun, and we both picked it last. Yep, absolutely. I would absolutely pick the X Bolt over the Kimber. Another point along there: if you haven't seen our videos where we went through each of these guns in great detail, um, the great, the good, the bad, the ugly on each one of these, make sure you go check those out. Um, there's there's just a lot of information packed into those that went into this decision. So vote which rifle you want us to take on the elk hunt. Uh, you've seen our preferences, but this is really up to you. Yeah.